And so, as this genuine Elizabethan phonograph recording ably demonstrates, <laughs> the true claimant to the throne of Scotland and England is he who is descended from the line of Mary, Queen of Scots, and Francis II of France. And that man is I, Raoul Heliotrope. My God, Heliotrope. If this is true, it means you're... you're part French. <laughs> it's my cross, strange trousers, and I'll bear it if it allows me to claim the throne of England. Never! Never, never, never! You shall never be coronated! Not while there's breath left in my body, cheese left in my pantry, and a note left on the fridge. And I think you know what I mean. <laughs> You deny that I rode a giant mutant mustard mole to the very gates of Buckingham Palace, or that I visited the full twelve plagues of Christmas upon this nation? Of course not. To deny such commonplace occurrences would be insane. See last year's serial and the Christmas special. But this <laughs> ancient record, it cannot be genuine. Genuine it is. It has resided here for four whole centuries, hidden safe within this. The stone of Scone? The stone of Schoon. <laughs> Go on, take it. Take the record. Subject it to any test you will. It is genuine, as is my claim. Later that day, deep in the bowels of MI5 and a quarter, amidst the high-tech Baco foil-wrapped splendor of his research and development department, Sir Professor Patrick Greatermass is poised on the brink of the edge of another monumental waste of public resources. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Greatermass, how have you been getting on with your test to expose the fraudulence of the heinous heliotrope's villainous vinyl? Ah, strange trousers. Little woman and I have been subjecting the record in question to projected advances in radioactive dating techniques. Radioactive projection? Indeed, we're actively projecting radios at it. Little woman, radio the trebuchet and let fly another wireless. Right, oh, Professor. No, 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 disaster! Our half timbered Art Deco Roberts, a new match of the inch thick reinforced Renaissance long player. Time, I fancy, to break out the heavy artillery. Uh, little woman, load up my solid teak phonograph with optional attentive beagle accessory. As you wish, Professor. <laughs> a hit, a hit, a palpable hit. Professor Greatermass, whatever lunacy you are currently engaged in, we request you stop it at once. <laughs> Another woman! Damnation! They're breeding! I believe, I believe that is the traditional prerogative of the female. You would guess it, mess. Stop gambling around the sharpened stilettos of that stationary cupboard, Matahari! Sir Royce, what are you doing out of your life support unit at this hour of the year? <laughs> oh, uh, just taking air. Carry on, everyone, don't mind me. Just continue working as if I wasn't... Where am I? We're in research and development, sir. Excellent! Excellent! What do they do here? <laughs> Miss Pencil Skirt, what are you doing down in R&D? Oh, Bentley. Perhaps I just came down to see you. Would you like that, Bentley? Would you like me to go down all the way to the basement? Just for you? Down, down to the very bottom of the shaft, just to make you happy? Is that what you want, you absolutely terrible man? Pencil skirt, take your filthy voice off that innocent fellow at once. Marjorie, dear, be a love and sign this. A requisition form? What are we getting now? Not more impounded accordions. Not getting. Releasing Heliotrope's record. We're releasing a record? Perhaps it'll be a hit. What's going on? This is my department, Pencil skirt. You have no jurisdiction here. This is an order and it comes from the very top. <laughs> Top of the bill, Max Miller, Hoban Empire, 1939. No, sir, not Max Miller. You, sir. Me? Yes, sir. But I've never played the Hoban Empire. Yes, but you are head of this department, sir. Am I? So when did Max 
Miller leave. <laughs> Never mind. Can't be helped. Carry on, Miss Pencil Skirt. Yes, I think what Sir Royce means to say is that given the potential gravity of Rail Heliotrope's claim to the throne, it is beholden of us to have all the evidence thoroughly and independently examined by a foremost expert in a field. Don't you mean the foremost expert in the field? Well, both actually. We are bringing in a scholar and archaeologist who gave invaluable assistance to the Allies during the last war. You don't mean a hero who's madly daring to helped wrest many powerful religious relics from the clutches of a Nazi war machine. Surely not! A whip-cracking, never fedora wearing trowel-wielding legend in his own mud-splattered, overtight denim trousers. Oh, dear God, no! None other than Professor Indiana Phil. <laughs> Hello, my lovers. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Phil, my God. You're even scruffier than your photograph suggests. Now, Wendy, let's get straight down to business. I've read over the site report, seems a bit of a picked breakfast to me. <laughs> so we've begun by opening a trench across the car park. It'll take a while to get down to the archaeology, as we've got a lot of layers to get through. Um, layers of cars! <laughs> Ah, lovely. Sounds like we're up and running at last. Well, they've got that shopping new DB7 out of the way. But that's my new DB7. Not for much longer. I spoil now, I reckon. <laughs> but why are you digging up our car park? We already have the evidence here in this very room. Oh, I know that. No, I just likes to do a, a good big trench, open as quick as possible. Helps me to think, clears the cobwebs. Now, where's this record? Right here, Indiana Phil. Lovely, let's have a shifty. Ooh, wow, that's interesting. That's very interesting. Wow, that certainly smells to me like a genuine Elizabethan 78. Galloping dynastic terrors. Listen to me, Professor. It is essential to the survival of the British way of life, and by British I mean, of course, English, that the authenticity of Heliotrope's claim be resolved quickly, and by quickly I mean, of course, unfavourably, which is why it is of vital importance that you employ every scientific test available and every academic theory at your disposal, and by that I mean, of course, fabricate any spurious cobblers you fancy that will fairly, objectively, and dispassionately brand this record extremely fraudulent with extreme prejudice. <laughs> now, I do hope you're not attempting to compromise the academic independence of Professor Phil's archaeological research. Oh, Bentley, that would be a serious disciplinary matter. Unless, of course, that's what you want. Is that it, Bentley? Do you want to be disciplined? Do you? You naughty, naughty boy! Um, no! Right, I'll get to work on this straight away. I've already set up my field laboratory. Where? In a field. Like the one next to the pub, obviously. Cheery boy, my lovers. Oh, and warn me if you see any Nazis. I don't know with Nazis. <laughs> uh, well then, uh, Professor Phil, allow me to show you out. <laughs> and that got rid of him. Later that evening, Bentley's strange trousers, along with Professors Greater Mass, Lesser Mass, and Little Woman, waits impatiently for news. I wonder what's taking Professor Phil so long. Fear not, Bentley, you cannot rush true scientific progress. Huh. Calls himself a professor, does he? Well, I have never seen him lunch at the Athenaeum, and I swear that disgusting plaid shirt of his isn't the result of single needle stitching. He doesn't even affect a bow tie. I mean, really, these days Oxford will dish out degrees to almost anyone with inbred genes and a passing familiarity with an irrelevant language. <laughs> Before long, they'll be attempted to educate the Welsh. No, I think we're now straying into the realms of pure fantasy. Besides which, Professor Phil may look like the product of a shameful midnight union between a minor Thomas Hardy novel and the sale at Oxfam. <laughs> but beneath the revolting grim of that filthy leather hat is concealed one of the finest filthy leather mines this filthy leather country has ever produced. Ah, Bentley, Patrick, Hubert, Marjorie. I'm so glad you're here. Professor Phil is ready to announce his findings. 
Shouldn't we wait for Sir Royce? Uh, Sir Royce conveys his apologies, but he's mm. currently enjoying his nightly colonic irrigation. <laughs> so, <laughs> Professor Phil, if you'd be so kind. Right oh! After literally an entire afternoon ceaseless digging and drinking a pint of beer, I've discovered that. Wait! As the outcome of this investigation affects my future more than anyone's, it only seems fair I should be in attendance. Raoul Heliotrope and Medea Black. <laughs> but this is a covert British government department, veiled in secrecy, shrouded in mystery, a riddle wrapped in a puzzle, sequestered in an enigma, and buried inside 400 tons of bomb-proof concrete, an impregnable fortress, of lead line dead bolted and cold locked behind a million levels of indecipherable alphanumeric encryptions. How could you possibly break in? You left the key under the mat. Curses! <laughs> I knew at this time of heightened security I should have stuffed it in the plant pot. Oh, you idiot stinks, Tazers! Professor Phil, what have you discovered? Well, Hubert, it looks like my first impressions were correct. This is an authentic Elizabethan 78 long playing phonograph record, <laughs> pressed in 1578 from finest civet cat, <laughs> with a decorated vellum outer and sleeve notes by William Shakespeare. Convinced now, strange trousers? Never! But surely the content of the recording cannot be real. Well, I hate to say it, Bentley, but everything indicates this is a genuine primary source account of an authentic second-hand reenactment of a bona fide third-party rumour put about one Friday night over a couple of pints of grog down the cock in Deptford. What an outstanding provenance. Oh, sorry about that. I think these shorts have shrunk a bit. Dingless <laughs> <laughs> laundry label non-compliance. But Indiana Phil. How have you managed to authenticate the recording with such accuracy? Oh, that's the easy bit, my darling. I simply employed advanced comedic dating techniques. <laughs> you mean you sliced the cross-section through the jokes in the record, thus creating a unique pattern of audience laughter and silent contempt, which would have potentially allow you to date the record to within a single year? That's right. Proper job. But, Professor, in, in order to contextualise this data, surely you need a single, unbroken litany of unoriginal gags dating back to at least the Reformation. Well, Ken Dodd's on a palladium, ain't he? <laughs> but the sleeve notes, Indiana Phil, are they really by William Shakespeare? Undoubtedly. As we can see, these notes start off economically enough, an exposition explaining the rivalry between the Queens of England and Scotland, but before he gets too far, in the writer gets distracted. Crowbar's in a slapstick bit with a maid, a cross-dressing subplot, and a scene with a wise fool who is as sagacious as he is irritating. <laughs> and what happens then? I don't know, I got bored and gave up. <laughs> and we've been able to stick it out to the end without falling asleep. My God! So it truly is by Shakespeare. That's what I said, and that. And thus, the final piece falls into place. My claim to the throne is authenticated. Medea. Yes, my darling. Order Westminster Abbey to stand by. Then tell the BBC to unwrap a fresh dimbleby. The coronation <laughs> is back on. With one slight amendment to the advertised program. Of course, Raoul. Soon I shall be king. And you, my beauteous Medea, shall be my queen. Oh, but darling, will the British people accept me as consort to their monarch? Well, let's see. Greek name. Insane ideas, as subtle as a sock of sand in the kisser. Yes, I think you'll work out quite nicely. 